Hi, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Western New England University's Virtual Accepted Students Day. I want to thank you all for getting me out of my home office, out of my sweatpants, and back onto campus. I'm Carrie Jarzowski, and I'm the Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management and Retention and Dean of First Year Students. And as a proud alumna of the university, I can truly say that it's a great day to be a Golden Bear. I understand that some of you out in the YouTube world are accepted and even deposited Golden Bears, but there are some of you who still might be thinking about applying. Rest assured that for those of you who are not yet accepted, there's still time to apply and join us this fall. Speaking of Golden Bears, for those of you who have already secured your place in the class of 2024, you should have received one in the mail and everyone should have received a laptop sticker. Right, Spirit? To keep today fun and interesting, I will be giving away lots of cool things from sweatshirts and t-shirts to bookstore gift cards to those of you who post a picture of yourself either in some Golden Bear gear or wearing something blue and gold and even better if it's official gear. If you haven't already, please join the Class of 2024 Facebook group and post your photos there throughout the event to be entered in to win fabulous prizes. And since you're the Class of 2024, at 1024 and 1124, I'll be picking my favorite pictures and the winners will receive a $150 bookstore gift card. Make sure you hashtag those photos, WNE. I hope today you'll be an active participant as I help you navigate our virtual experience. And don't forget, you can deposit at any time, right Spirit? The link is on our Virtual Accepted Students Day website. Also, please know that today all of our enrollment services staff are available to you from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. They're standing by ready to answer your calls at 413-796-2080. So go ahead and send them any financial aid questions that you might have, or if you're a veteran, we'll have someone available today to answer any benefits questions that you might have. So in case you missed the meeting, go ahead and call enrollment services today at 796-2080. And I think, right, uh, Spirit, that the bookstore is offering 20% off all day today. So don't forget to take advantage of that fabulous discount and all your The link is also on our virtual assistance Tuesday page. Today, we've worked hard to craft a great virtual experience for you, but I want to acknowledge the event that we set out to hold just a few short months ago. And for you, this has not been the senior year that you were looking forward to. Social distancing is hard. Learning remotely is hard. Missing prom and other big senior events is hard. And let's face it, for all of us, being away from our family and friends is really hard. Our students have also had to leave campus, pack up their residence hall rooms, miss their sports seasons, and big traditions like spring event and senior week. COVID-19 has forced all of us to rethink our new normal. And at WNE, we've worked hard to jump into action and move our classes online, get our academic success center up and running virtually, and finding fun ways to create online communities through FaceTime, Google Hangouts, and Zoom chat. I know that it's already difficult to think about selecting a college and begin thinking about the next chapter of your life, especially during challenging times. You need to know that at Western Union, you will find a community of people who care about your success and are committed to helping you reach your goals. So today, you get to interact with some of us live and to see some quick videos about the academic and co-curricular opportunities on campus. From the classroom to the football field, whether you're interacting with a student leader or staff member, today's event should show you all the possibilities and support you have here at Western New England. Today, Spirit and I are gonna be responsible and we're gonna try hard to stay six feet apart while he shows you some of our traditions and together, we're gonna to be your host. We want us to ask you questions. We want you to ask us questions in the chat room and make sure you write your full name and home time because we want to make sure you have the best virtual experience and the most virtual time. In the end, I hope today's event conveys to you what I know matter to us. Here we take a personalized approach, both in and out of the classroom, and we challenge you to reach your goals and try new things. And while we're really disappointed that you can't be on campus with us today, talking with all of our fantastic students, we put together a great video for you to hear from them with some of their favorite things about what New England are. So take a minute as we move to the Okay. Right. Hi, I'm Michaela, and I'm from Bennington, Vermont, and I'm a senior here. Hi, I'm Aubrey, and I'm from East Windsor, Connecticut, and I'm also a senior here. 
Let's go meet some of your future classmates. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> My name is Marissa Vero. I'm from Saratoga Springs, New York. I'm part of the class of 2021. My name is Alexis Shavs. I'm from Somerset, Massachusetts and I'm the class of 2021. Best place to study on campus is the CSP. Um, hi, my name is Sabrina Portal. I'm a junior criminal justice major from West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, the biggest don't for a freshman, I would definitely say do not skip any classes. Get involved on campus. It helps out so much. The best part about, the best part about living on campus is you get to make new friends and I can walk to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Amoy Barrett. I'm from Avon, Mass, class of 2023, and my favorite place to get on campus is the dining hall. Hi, my name is Autumn Kelly. I'm a junior computer engineering major from Princeton, Massachusetts. My favorite event at Western New England is opening day when the first year students move in. As a peer advisor, it's really exciting to meet everybody and see their first day on campus and make those connections on day one. I'm Evelyn Nassif. I'm from Meriden, Connecticut, class 2022. My favorite place to hang out is the Commonwealth Lawn because we all get to hang out and do fun things together. Name, hometown, hometown and year, okay. Hi, my name is Jessica Goodrich. I am from Springfield, Massachusetts, so I am a native here and I am a junior. Um, my favorite thing about um, WNE is the diversity programs and the Connections Mentoring Club. My name is Ashley Buchanan. I'm from Wallingford, Connecticut, and I'm the class of 2022. The biggest advice I have for freshmen is to not wear your lanyard around your neck, because then it makes it really obvious you're a freshman. My name is Allison New. I'm from Rochester, New York, and I'm in the class of 2021, and I chose Western New England University because it's such a pretty campus. Hi, my name is Matunga. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. The best place to study on campus is definitely the Demore Library. My name is Jaron Maple. I'm from the class of 2020 and I'm from South McMass. Uh, my favorite class here was playwriting. I met a ton of new people and it was really put me out of my comfort zone in the best way possible. Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. Hi, I'm Christina Sorty. I'm from Bethlehem, Connecticut. I'm the class of 2021 and I really love when we have sporting events on campus and I think it really brings everyone together, especially homecoming weekend in the fall. What's going on? I'm Johnny Riley from Holbrook, New York. You're the best place to meet new people. I'd say the best place to meet new people would have to be like, um, not career fairs, but club fairs get involved with all the different activities that the campus has to offer. I'm a member of the Sages Players, the theater group on campus. I'm a member of Warp, the gaming club on campus. I'm a member of the Review of Art and Literature. My name's Colin Bean. I'm from East Windsor, uh, Connecticut. I'm a pharmaceutical business major, sophomore, and one word to describe, WNA is excellent. All of the students and the faculty really care about all the students in the classroom, and they want to see you do well, and all the staff members truly are great at reaching out and just wanting us to do better in everything that we do. It's to just really make the most of your time at West New England, get as involved as you can, and you're going to love it here. Hey, wasn't that video great? I miss our students and I'm so glad technology is allowing us to see each other. When I talk to students, I often hear about the relationships they forge with faculty and staff and how those impactful relationships have really changed their path to graduation in really positive ways. I feel so fortunate every day to work with amazing students and it is my pleasure to introduce you to your student body president for the 2021 academic year. Adeteo Olentinwo. She's going to talk to you a little bit about her experiences at Western New England and some of the special people who've helped to shape her path. Hi everyone, my name is Adeteo. So I asked some of my mentors on campus to share some advice that they shared with me that helped me with you guys. So here it goes. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Jarzavsky. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management and Dean of First Year Students. And I was Adeteo's first year seminar instructor and faculty advisor when she was a freshman. So she asked me today to talk to you a little bit about a piece of advice I gave her that I thought would be helpful for all first year students. So my advice really boils down to, you don't have to have everything figured out today for the rest of your life. 
Hi everyone, I'm Sean. I'm a career advisor in the Career Development Center. My best advice to you would be that now is not the time to tell yourself what you can't do or worry if you're not 100% sure what you want to do. Now's the time to figure out what you do well and what you love to do. We can help you figure that out and we can help you figure out how to turn it into a rewarding career. Hello, my name is Josie Brown and I am Assistant Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences and Professor of English. My advice to Editeo and to all incoming students is to do you. Come to college, figure out who you are, learn about the world you live in and how you fit into that world, and then decide on your major. Don't come to college and major in areas that other people have told you you should be interested in or in areas that other people tell you that you should be good at. Figure out for yourself what you are good at and what you want to do. Good luck. Hello everyone, my name is Dominic Seguro. I'm the Director for Student Success and Engagement at Western University. I've had the opportunity of working with Aditeo for over a year now in the Academic Success Center as an Academic Progress Monitor, as well as her role as a peer advisor through the Office of First Year Students and Students in Transition. One piece of advice that I gave Aditeo and I continue to give her that I really think is also applicable for you all is that it's okay to have challenges. It's okay to struggle through things. It's not about all the wins in life, but what you've learned from the challenges and the failures that you face. My name is Alyssa Calagiri and I am the Assistant Director for First Year Student Success. I work with Adateo in her role as a peer advisor on campus. And the best piece of advice that I've ever given to Adateo and our student leaders is if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. So try new things, step out of your comfort zone. You never know what might happen and you might be pleasantly surprised. Hi, my name is Sophia Rios, Assistant Director for Academic Success Initiatives. I met Adateo about two years ago in her role as a peer advisor. One piece of advice I always give my students is to find a mentor. A mentor is going to be that person who believes in you when you struggle to believe in yourself. They will help you to see and reach your potential and at times make you feel like you can conquer the world. Adateo has met mentors here on campus, but she's also a mentor to many incoming students. So as you arrive to campus, I want you to look for those mentors. And as you navigate that first year, I want you to think about how you can be a mentor for someone else. Hi everyone, my name's Deneen Northrup and I am a professor and the chair of psychology. My best advice for students is to say yes. You are presented with so many opportunities in college, the best thing that you can do is say yes. Dive in and engage. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. That's how you really begin to understand what you resonate with. Embrace that feeling and cultivate it. That's how you find your path. I hope most of your days are inspiring and filled with happiness. But there are going to be days where you feel challenged. In those times, remember that those challenges are what develop you and help you to grow as a person. Those are the times that are the most meaningful. You'll look back on them and you'll see how far you've come as a person. So what is my best advice to first year students? But my best advice is that you first enjoy your life. Have fun. This is a new experience for you being here at Western New England University and being a golden bear. So we want you to have fun. We want you to use your resources. Please, please use your resources. We definitely want you to get involved, get connected. Your roommate, you know, your friends down the hall, join some clubs and organizations and have some fun become the best you that you can be. So we look forward to meeting you in the fall. And remember, we have been taking care of students for over a hundred years. Good morning, everyone. I'm very excited to be here today. Before I introduce myself, I would like to start by thanking Dean Kerry Jarzapski for giving me this opportunity. My name is Aditeo Olatunwo and I'm a junior psychology major from Monroe, Connecticut. On campus, I'm a peer advisor, a student ambassador, an academic progress monitor, a member of United and Mutually Equal, and last but not least, I am also a member of National Residence Hall Honorary Association. And last but not least, I am newly elected student senate president. I'm not gonna lie, when I was asked to prepare my speech today, I was struggling with it. How could I possibly sum up almost three years of college in three to five minutes? It has gone by so fast, yet so much has happened. When I look back on the person I was when I began, I am so proud of her. In college, I faced many challenges. It all started with my major. I did not feel it was right for me. I knew I had more potential than what I was doing and I could not cage my personality. 
I struggled over and over again. Then one day I sat down with a few mentors and I decided to change it. One thing I am thankful for is that I always have people around me that sometimes watch me stumble, but they are never too far to catch me when I fall. In life, you will fall over and over again. You will make mistakes, and if you're like me and you're emotional, you will cry. I cried when I didn't know what I wanted to be. I cried pulling all-nighters. I cried through almost anything. However, I'm thankful that I had people to help me wipe my tears and encourage me to keep going. Coming into college, you have to have something to believe in. And on those days when you cannot believe in yourself, you have to surround yourself with people that will believe in yourself, that will believe in you for you. All the people in the video that you have watched earlier have believed in me at one point or another when I did not believe in myself. Have you ever heard the quote, it takes a village to raise a child? That is very true of Western New England University. Along your journey here, you will find people that will help you to your success. I can accumulate a percentage of my success with all the support I have received in this community. If you are looking for a university where you are supported until the very end and, they, and people will find every angle to your success, this is the place for you. We will welcome you with open arms even if you are not perfect and even if you do not have it all figured out. Never did I think that I could accomplish all these things in three years. It still boggles my mind to think that I am here today. So today, I encourage you to come to the university with an open mind to all the possibilities. If you come to Western New England University, you will leave being the best version of yourself. Just know your best is yet to come. I cannot wait to see you all on opening day. Stay healthy. Thank you, Adateo. Boy, Spirit and I have really missed our students. And while Spirit has been without students, he's been sad. So he's been spending his extra free time really trying to learn more about our traditions and prepare for Bear Olympics. Bear Olympics is a tradition that we have every Labor Day weekend where the freshmen in different residence halls battle against each other for the big prize. So show them your skills, Spirit. Woohoo! All right. Now, as I said earlier, we're going to get the whole time so if you like this fabulous sweatshirt make sure you're posting those pictures i want to give a big sh shout out to brian cooper from schenectady new york he was the first one to post in the chat today brian you get this sweatshirt my friend well since i'm right in front of delisa hall hall home of the uh place where the president's office is and many of the president's staff i want to let you hear more about what the president of the university thinks about western new england dr caprio Western New England University is a remarkable place to live and to learn. I'm Dr. Anthony Caprio, president at Western New England University. It's a pleasure for me to welcome everyone today. It's a pleasure to be here on the beautiful campus that we have. I often get asked many questions concerning our university. What makes us unique? What are our key attributes? What are the special things that we do for our students? How do we interact with our students? What's life? like on the campus of Western New England. We have many unique qualities and many unique attributes. Much of that stems from the diversity of offerings that we have at Western New England. We have four colleges at the university. College of Arts and Sciences, College of Pharmacy, College of Business, College of Engineering, as well as a School of Law. If you're a student studying English or you're a student who's studying business or engineering, going to be exposed to the ways of thinking that occur and that happen at these other colleges of the university. This leads to a more broad education and introduces every student to different ways of thinking about the area that they're going to specialize in. Now we have a term around here called learning beyond the classroom and this is an effort to provide meaningful experiences throughout the day on campus and off campus so that we feel that there is no time lost in helping you, the student, develop into the kind of professional that you want to be and into the kind of person that you want to be. Not only do we have a beautiful campus environment, we also have faculty and staff who are so entirely committed to the success of its students. They're trained in order to be of use and to help our students achieve success to help our students be successful in the classroom and out of the classroom, 
to help our students learn what it is to make a life after Western New England and to make a living after Western New England. We have so much to offer here at Western New England University, and I hope you'll come visit. Let us share it with you. Hey, thanks, Dr. Caprio. Uh, Spirit and I made our way over to Herman Hall, one of our academic buildings. And that reminds me that at Western New England University, your faculty are really gonna get to know you. They're gonna know your names and they're gonna challenge you to think differently. And through the academic challenges, you'll be supported by our terrific academic success staff. So speaking of the classroom experience, if you have any questions about academics at Western New England, send us those questions now in the chat. And don't forget to put your full name and hometown so that we can give you a fabulous prize. And speaking of academics, please join me in watching a short video of our academic deans and some of our students to share with you their experiences with academics inside the classroom at Western New England. You know, when you want to uh, travel to a, to a country, you need a passport. There is a virtual passport to move to future, and that is the liberal education. Part of our duty, uh, and especially in arts and sciences, is to train students uh, to be able to handle the challenges of the future. Western New England University College of Business is a place where relevant curriculum, hands-on business experience, internships, honors programs, even our business interest living community and speaker series connect you immediately to business and business people. Uh, to me, uh, Western New England University is an uh, opportunity. In the College of Engineering, we provide different types of opportunities for our students. We focus on design, innovation, and entrepreneurship from the first day on campus. They are ready uh, to start working immediately in industry or any other place that they decide to work at. Hi everyone, my name is Mia Cariglia. I am from Worcester, Massachusetts, and I am a junior creative writing and public relations double major here at Western New England. A few things about the College of Arts and Sciences is that it's just a happy and positive place to be. Everyone from your faculty, your staff, your professors, your advisor, and your peers care about you. You're able to form these relationships with them where they get to know you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So they can help you when it comes to classes, internships, majors, or career advice in general. I've had the opportunity to have multiple internships through the College of Arts and Sciences, and I've also had the opportunity to study abroad as well. There are also many clubs and organizations within the College of Arts and Sciences that can help you get more involved in the community, as well as help you to figure out what you're passionate about in life. The College of Arts and Sciences is a great place to be, and everyone there cares about you and is going to push you to be the best person that you can be. Hello, future Golden Bears. My name is Sofia Placo. I am a sophomore marketing major with a minor in international business. I wanted to reach out to all of you today and congratulate you on your acceptance as well as give you a little bit more of the student perspective about the College of Business. So um, as a business student, I've had the opportunity to work with a different number of faculty as well as take a lot of uh, different um, business courses um, within my two years at Western New England. So the first two years are pretty much laid out for you. You do take similar courses with, you, with your peers with some differences depending on what major you have. Um, a lot of businesses come in as undecided, which is not bad. I was undecided until the beginning of this year, so do not worry about it. Um, you do have a lot of opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with faculty and have that connection. Um, you do meet your faculty advisor um, in your first year seminar class, and that person in a way guides you into what classes to take as well as like what your area of interest might be. Mine, um, I had a very 
long conversation with mine about like what I was interested in and up doing marketing with the minor international business. So you do get a lot of that one on one opportunity which um our campus offers and just our college in general is very good at. Um, you do the courses. So there are very intense classes, but also you learn a lot from those classes. So as a business student, I've had the opportunity to have classes where you do one-on-one -on -one work as well as group work. And I've gained a lot of different skills from both aspects of the um, class. So I personally really enjoyed it. I'm not a very big numbers person, so that's why I went to marketing. But um, I am currently taking accounting and you do take accounting, finance, marketing, major, and all that. So yeah, um, hope you have a good rest of your virtual tour day. Acceptance students day. So yeah, have a great day. What's up, future golden bears? My name is Autumn Kelly, a junior computer engineering major at Western New England University. We are so excited that you guys get to join us today. We miss you, and we are so sad that we didn't get to see you in person. But even so, we are still excited to see you guys here today. One thing I love about Western New England University is the College of Engineering and the programs that they have. The professors, to them, you're not a statistic, a number in a classroom. You are a person. They care about you and your future and what you want to do with your life. They will sit down and say, well, what do you want to do? And build your classes and your future internships. Everything is based off of what you want. If there's something in the class that you are concerned about or that you want changed, do you want to see more of, you can go and be like, oh, I really like this, but I don't like this. And they will actually curve the curriculum so that you still learn everything you need to learn, but you learn in a way that you enjoy and you get to learn the things that you also love and are interested in. So future G Bears, I hope to see you guys in August and opening day. Thank you guys so much for coming and enjoy your day. Hey, welcome back everybody to our Traditions with Spirit. Spirit's behind me painting the rock. The rock was originally dropped onto campus many years ago as a class prank, and now it's become an integral part of our community where students will often paint and advertise their upcoming events. I wanna give a shout out to Spirit, to uh, Michelle Goodfellow, Executive Director of Admissions. Uh, I have this trusty iPad and she's been sending me some of your questions. And since we're at about the 1024 hour, some questions and pictures so you can be entered in to win that $150 bookstore gift card. So a question that came in so far is what is your typical first semester course load like in the College of Business? And you know what, that's a great question. In the College of Business and actually in almost every college on campus, all first year students will take a first year seminar. And in that business seminar, their instructor will actually be their faculty advisor for their first year. So they're gonna get to know their faculty really well and really build those personal connections right away. Most of our freshmen also take English, a business math course, um, a management course, and then one other course that's either maybe like a psychology or a sociology. Some may choose economics or history. So you certainly have some flexibility in your first semester to pick a course that's really interesting to you. So Michelle has told me that the winner, the first winner of our class of 2024 on the 24 is Abby Lawson from Naugatuck, Connecticut. Congratulations, Abby. You just received a $150 bookstore gift card. Now, as a Dean of First Year Students, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how I will work to make your first year a great one. Whether it's from orientation to amazing experiences to the relationship you're gonna get with your peer advisor or the outstanding support in our Academic Success Center, you're gonna find that from day one, our first year staff is here for you. So please take a minute to hear some of our student and staff perspectives on the first year. We'll see you in a little bit. Whether you're a freshman or transfer student, the first year program will welcome and support you with our team of professors, administrators, and upper class student mentors all who are committed to helping you make your first year on campus your best year yet. The first year program offers support in many ways, such as building student confidence, identifying a network of educational and emotional support, encouraging involvement and participation in campus life, and monitoring academic progress and encouraging academic engagement. Don't worry, you won't have to make this new step alone. Peer advising is an essential part to the first year program. 
Each incoming first year student is assigned to an upper class student who is trained to serve as a source of information, point of first contact, and connection to programs and services. Through a personal success plan, each student will form their own goals to provide them direction and purpose throughout this first year. Student success is the most important thing to a peer advisor, besides showing them everything Western New England has to offer. While the peer advisors are the main support for their students, the peer advisors also help engage students within the transitions program and help them have some fun. The first year program kicks off transitions on opening day and then puts on multiple events over the first six weeks. At Fun on the Sunday, students can enjoy free shaved ice, inflatables, and dunk their new PA in a dunk tank. Bearfest brings our students to Camp Beckett for a full day of activities to engage with fellow classmates. Other activities include trips ranging from paintball to exploring Boston to weekly Friday night events, such as a welcome back carnival. There is a student activities expo where you can learn more about the 70 plus clubs and organizations and more. There is something to do for everyone in those first six weeks, so be sure to participate and jump out of your comfort zone. One way to get involved right away on campus is through Freshman Council. The Freshman Council is a great opportunity for freshmen to develop their college experiences, build memories, create new friendships, and learn about student government. The Council plans and coordinates activities for the freshman class and fosters a sense of class identity while participating in large campus events like Dancing with the G-Bears and Lights Out. The first year program is committed to student success. Through support, the program aims to assist students new to Western New England University in establishing a sense of purpose in their academic endeavors and maximizing their college experience. Hello everyone, my name is Zeno Temple, a law society major with a double minor in political science and criminal justice. I'm from Philadelphia, PA, and I would like to talk to you about my experience as an orientation group leader. As an orientation group leader, my goal was to build connections with incoming class and guide them through our two-day SOAR program. My experience as an orientation group leader was very eye-opening. First impressions are so important that we often don't take notice. Some of the connections I made within the first opening hours of the program transitioned into friendships and mentorships that could honestly last a lifetime. Lastly, I hope that you, your family, and your friends are doing well and staying safe during this time. And remember, no bears. Hello Accepted students, it's Dominic Seguro again from the Academic Success Center, working remotely from home but on campus in spirit. I want to take this time to talk about the academic support services we have on campus from the Math Center, the Writing Center, and the Academic Success Center. Now I know many of you might be looking at Western New England from the beautiful campus, the small classroom sizes, maybe the faculty staff relationships or athletic programs, but I also know you want to know more about the in and out of class support that you will receive. Now we have programs such as peer tutoring, supplements and instruction, academic progress monitoring, workshop series, and so much more. Our peer tutoring program is a free program where our students are able to actually get taught by someone who's already taken the class, gotten an A in the class, and have been recommended by their faculty to help support other students. It's a great program to make sure that you are continually supported to meet your academic goals and that even if you face a challenge, that we're here to support you through it. We also love working with students one-on-one, -on -one, so please stop by our office when we're back on campus. Give us a call or an email in the meantime and follow us at our Academic Success Center Instagram page at WNE underscore Academic Success. Now you get to hear a little bit more about the specific academic progress monitoring program for Jordan. Hi. My name is Jordan Brown Rose, and I am a junior American Studies major from Wilbraham, Mass. On campus, I work in the Academic Success Center as an Academic Progress Monitor. Academic Progress Monitors are a group of your peers who meet with students either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on each individual's needs. During these meetings, we help students with skills like time management, study habits, utilizing resources, and more. Academic Progress Monitors work closely with faculty and other offices on campus like counseling services and peer tutors to ensure that each student is successful. Academic progress monitors can help students in their transition from high school to college to ensure that they are successful. That's like an eternity. 
Hey, Spirit and I have made our way over to the Golden Bear statue. Another fun tradition that our students have at Western New England is getting on the spare before they graduate and taking a selfie. Say cheese. All right. Hey, I'm seeing a question here. Thanks, Michelle, for sending that in to me from Amy Lai from Auburn, Mass. Hey, Amy, I have family in Auburn. You're asking um, how classes at WNE prepare students for life after college and beyond. And you know what? That's a great question. And I think you'll find our classroom experiences are gonna be very relevant. We'll challenge you to think differently. And your faculty are also gonna to try to connect you to experiences out of the classroom that are gonna make you even more of a valuable asset to companies and employers when you go out to interview. So from internships, to research, to conferences, to real world experiences, you're gonna get that at West England, which is a great segue to the next set of videos that we have. Uh, Andrea St. James, who's our Director of Career Development, is going to talk to you a little bit about the Career Development Center and the Advising Center. Jessica, about our For You model. And before I forget, I'm wearing this fabulous hat, and Michelle is going to help me to pick a winner to give it to based on those fabulous photos. So keep the questions and photos coming, and we'll see you after those videos. Hi there. My name is Andrea St. James, and I'm the director of the Career Development Center at Western New England University. I'm just stopping by this afternoon to share with you some of the reasons why I feel we have an amazing Career Development Center. First, I have the opportunity to work with five fantastic professionals, the Career Advising Team, Employer Outreach, and Career Programming. Together, we meet your students where they are to identify what their strengths are, what their interests are, to help educate them on the opportunities available and the resources they need to be successful. Because ultimately, that's what we're here to do, to see your students be successful. The Career Advising Team are specialists for the College of Arts and Science, the College of Business, and the College of Engineering. Starting in the first year, moving through a student's four years at the university, we're here to help them craft and hone their toolkit, their resume, their cover letter, their research as to what they can do with their major. To identify what opportunities exist, whether it's through research, whether it's through an internship, a summer job, um, a professional association, helping students understand what opportunities are out there, what they need to capitalize on, and then finally, how do they communicate that? Um, so whether it's through a virtual interview, an in-person interview, helping students understand what their Western New England University experience is and how it will add value to a potential employer or graduate program. Our employer outreach area is charged with developing relationships with our employers. And whether it's through a career fair that's held on campus or one that's virtual, our employers still want to connect with our students. So it's important that we maintain those relationships and we open those opportunities for our students to be successful, to gain experience outside of Western New England University. Finally, our career programming, um, not, whether it's a networking reception with our board of trustees, a career panel, a webinar, a virtual drop-in. We're here to help our students in a group format, and in, in, in addition to individually, um, understand what it means to be successful, um, what it means to be in a different environment. How do I be successful um, starting off in a new job? So those types of programs are important for us uh, to promote and provide to your students. Um, as a whole, I wish I was there to be able to answer your questions individually and in person, but I encourage you, if you have any questions, please reach out to me via email or phone. It would be my pleasure to provide any additional information regarding career development. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care. Congratulations on your acceptance to WNE class of 2024. I hope you're hunkering down during this crazy time. While I can't be with you from campus today, from my home to yours, I wanna share some important information with you. My name is Jessica Hill and I'm the Director of University Advising. As a first year student, you will have your very own four person team of advisors to guide you every step of the way. It's all a part of our For You Comprehensive Advising Program because we are here for you. More information to come soon. For now, be safe and stay healthy. Hey, Spirit and I have made our way over to the Commonwealth Lawn. 
This big lawn is where you often will see our students relaxing in between classes, either tossing a football, playing volleyball, playing cornhole, or, you know, just catch some rays like Spirit's doing right out here. Speaking of recreational sports and residence halls, I'd like to invite you to watch this quick video about living on campus and athletics with Beth Hill and Matt LeBranch. We'll see you in a bit. Greetings. My name is Beth Hill. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Residence Life and Title IX Educator at Western New England University. And I'm honored to be able to speak with you for a few moments about our Residence Life Program. If I were to qualify our program in one word, that would be the word of community. It is the foundation of everything that we do here at Western New England's Residence Life. At Western New England, first and second year students are required to live on campus. First year students will be residing in either Hamden, Franklin, Berkshire, or Commonwealth Halls this year. In our program, we have learning interest communities that are based upon either academic or social interests. We also have specialized interest communities that focus on our rising business professionals, as well as an honors program. We hope that your students will thoroughly enjoy all those opportunities that those learning interest communities have to offer. Also, working with your students are undergraduate students known as resident advisors. I know you've heard a lot about student leaders on campus and in residence life we have resident advisors. They are sophomore juniors or seniors and some post baccalaureate students who are there to serve as mentor for your students, to serve as a resource, a support system, to offer programs for your student to keep them engaged and part of our community. And one of the main jobs that they also have is to make sure that your student has a safe and secure living in environment. Our goal at Western New England University is to create citizens, good citizens, citizens that will depart our community and go out into the world. In addition, we are looking to develop independent thinkers and lifelong learners. With these three concepts in mind, we hope that your student has a great experience at Western New England University, and we look forward to you becoming a member of our Residence Life Program. Hi everyone, my name is Matt LeBranch. I'm the Director of Athletics here at Western New England University. I'm coming to you from my office in the Alumni Health for Living Center, which right now is a, is a quiet building, but um, I know in the, in the near future we'll be, we'll be back up and running, and, and uh, we'll be getting back to uh, our very comprehensive and competitive athletic program. I want to uh, offer a personal welcome to Western New England uh, Accepted Students Day today, uh, and uh, say that I, you know, personally appreciate your interest in our in our university. And it's, we focus on on three very important areas. Um, one is excellence on the field. We're very proud of the competitiveness of our teams. I can give you a brief overview of uh, some highlights from from the different seasons. Uh, this year, to illustrate that, uh, this past fall, our football program won its fifth consecutive conference title and made you know, another appearance in the NCAA tournament. Uh, this winter, our women's basketball team repeated as NCAA qualifiers um, and had a tremendous, uh, had a tre another tremendous season. Our wrestling program had three, um, had three individuals qualify for nationals, one of which was uh, our first ever national champion, uh, John Boyle, uh, going back to nationalists to defend his, his uh, title, uh, if you will, or his championship, if you will. And, um, you know, unfortunately, they didn't get a chance to finish that uh, as uh, that's really when our season was shut down. But a um, tremendous season for wrestling and those, those individuals making it to nationals. And as the spring started, uh, the men's lacrosse team was off to a great start as it had, um, as they were preparing to defend their conference championship as well and make another run at the NCAA tournament. So those are just a few of the highlights uh, of what we mean by having very competitive sports. And we have 20 sports uh, in our department. Uh, and those are just some of the highlights uh, in terms of, uh, of how competitive we are. Um, in terms of the other areas that we like to focus on, we believe in athletics as a co-curricular uh, endeavor. And our student athletes are students first. And excellence on the field is critically important. Um, and, uh, um, you know, all of our students um, excel in the classroom and still find time to uh, engage and pursue and, 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 uh, and complete important internships that lead to uh, tremendous job opportunities. Uh, and 
And then the third area, which is the third pillar or important part of our three-pronged approach or philosophy to athletics here, with um, excellence on the field and excellence in the classroom, is um, excellence in leadership, or pursuit of leadership and development of leadership. All of our student athletes participate in, in community service each and every year, and uh, a large percentage of our athletes get opportunities to develop leadership skills, meaningful leadership skills, that will carry them or that will help them in their future pursuits through opportunities like serving on the Student Athlete Advisory Committee or as a member of the Captain's Council or becoming a life skills mentor and serving as a mentor to other student athletes um, that enter our, our ranks as freshmen. For all of you that are considering Western Wyndham, depending on what step you are in the process, um, our coaches are still are still working diligently to finish out their classes. Uh, so if you haven't been in touch with our coaches, I encourage you to get in touch with them. All their information can be found on our website. Uh, and I want to wish you uh, luck with finishing your pro uh, finishing out your college selection. I hope to see you here uh, next year as a, as a member of the Golden Bear Athletic Family. And I hope everyone continues to stay safe. Hey, I can't wait to have all of our students back and cheering on our Golden Bears and Golden Bear Stadium. I hope you learned a lot from Matt and Beth's quick videos. I see we have a question here from Lauren Dana Randazzo in Aguam, Massachusetts. She's asking what the biggest difference between honors housing is and regular residence halls. And that's a great question. And so I can't wait to send you this long sleeve t-shirt. Um, I, I will say is that in honors housing, you're living with all students who've been admitted to the honors program and you work closely with your resident advisor and the honors coordinator for your college. And there are some special programs that are both fun and academic that occur in the residence halls from field trips to just simple like make a puzzle with your faculty member night. But it's a great way to interact with your peers who are in honors and to get to know your faculty better. But if you don't choose that option, living in the residence halls is great as well. Whether you choose to live in a premium single, which maybe sends your home by yourself in your bedroom all this time, you might decide I want a premium single, but if you're like me, I would wanna be around lots of people, get back in the game and, and make as many connections as possible. So you might choose to be in a double environment as well. So there are lots of options in housing. Spirit and I have made our way over to enrollment services. Haven't we Spirit? Enrollment services is where you can find our financial aid counselors. And that leads us to our next segment. I'm going to be tossing the golden bear over to my friends and colleagues in admissions and financial aid. First up is my good friend and colleague and also proud alum, Chris Weistepeck, who's going to talk to you a little bit about um, why he thinks it's great that you've been admitted and to send a nice congratulatory video. And you're also going to hear from Julie Richardson, who's our executive director of enrollment services and registrar, a little bit more about financial aid and how the enrollment services staff is here for you. So stay tuned, we'll see you in a bit. My name is Chris Weistepec. I'm the Director of Outreach and Recruitment for Enrollment Management here at Western New England University. Uh, I just want to first of all say congratulations on your acceptance to the university. Uh, I worked with many of you during the process and, and this is something that's a really huge accomplishment. I'm a big believer in personalized attention and I know it's something that a lot of students are going to hear from other colleges and universities saying we offer the personalized attention. I always like to tell students, we're not going to say we're going to show it. And the opportunity to do that, come for a visit, come talk to one of the admissions counselors, come talk to me, uh, and we will definitely give you that attention that you deserve. And that's going to carry out through the four years when you're here. So as long as you're not afraid to ask for questions, you step up, uh, I can tell you the experience is going to be well worth it. The school since I have graduated has grown tremendously. I mean. The growth between the academics, the quality, the athletics, the co-curricular activity offerings, the opportunities. Oh, there's so many memories that I actually have. Uh, I mean, I could say one of the best memories is meeting all my closest friends. Believe it or not, I, I think I keep in more touch with people from college than I do from high school. Uh, when I had got married, my wedding party was everyone from Western New England. We had a few tables of students from Western New England, and faculty, staff that were all invited to the wedding. Second is, is the academics. I got the education that I was looking for. Uh, I was definitely one of the shyest kids you could ever meet in high school, which is hard to believe for a lot of individuals, but 
uh, came here and they teach you how to take risk and, and they teach you not to be afraid and um, there's going to be times you're going to fail but you learn from your mistakes and you get up and you do it over again and, and I really took that to heart all the way from freshman year to senior year and, and coming in as a nervous, shy freshman to becoming a student leader on campus and, and now being able to work with students and, and hopefully they get the experience that I, I had here if not better. If I had to give some personal advice to any incoming student is don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I, I know there's going to be a lot of times you're going to be nervous, you're going to be shy, you're going to be anxious, but trust me, once you get over that hump, and whatever that hump is, whether it's in the first week, second week, second month, um, once you get over that, I can tell you right now, you are going to be so pleased with your decision. And I'm hoping that we will be able to see a lot of you guys here in the fall as Golden Bears. Welcome to Western New England University. I'm Julie Richardson, and I'm the Executive Director of Enrollment Services and University Registrar at Western New England University. I want to congratulate you on your acceptance. You know, every academic year I have three favorite days. Accepted Students Day, Move-In Day, and Commencement. The energy of those days and seeing all of your beautiful faces is something that I find personally really fulfilling. So know that I'm really missing seeing all of you today. Did I ever imagine that I would be sending you my accepted students day greetings from the smallest bedroom in my home while wearing my slippers? We're all finding ways to keep our lives moving, but know that I miss the energy of seeing you. Enrollment Services is the one-stop shop at Western New England for everything related to paying your bill, financial aid, and academic records and registration. We're located on the ground floor of Demore Library but we're currently all working remotely while we observe the governor's stay at home advisory. I'll tell you a little bit more about how to get in touch with us in just a few minutes. Know that we have 10 financial aid professionals who are standing by right now to answer any questions that you might have about your financial aid award. We also have another 15 individuals who work and are dedicated to helping you navigate the academic process. We pride ourselves on the relationships that we build with our families and on our personal attention. Know that we started sending out financial aid awards in December, so you should have gotten yours by now. If you haven't received that, you can email us at finaid at winnie.edu or you can call us at 413-796-2080, either today until one o'clock or during normal office, office operating hours, which are 8.30 to 4.30 during the academic year or until 4 p.m. On, on weekdays in the summer. Later in today's program, you'll also have the opportunity to watch a session with Kathy Chambers, our Director of Financial Aid, while she walks you through how to understand what your financial aid award consists of. There are three general types of aid that you might see in your award. The first is the free money, grants and scholarships, which are funds that don't have to be repaid. Another type is work study, where you'll have the opportunity to get a job on campus, where you'll earn a biweekly paycheck that allows you to help pay for books or weekly uh, incidental expenses. The third form of financial aid you may see in your package is loans, and those could be student loans or parent loans. Again, your enrollment services counselor can help you understand any of these types of aid that might be in your award. We also will have some additional times. We'll be open until 6 o'clock p.m. next Wednesday, April 8th. We'll also be open on Saturday, April 25th from 8.30 until 1 o'clock. So those are also additional times that you can reach us. You know, choosing a college is one of the most important decisions you're ever going to make. It'll impact the rest of your life. I know that a lot of you are anxious about the pandemic and how this is going to affect your lives but know that we're here to help you every step of the way. Over the last few weeks, I've watched my colleagues work tirelessly to make sure everyone in our community is safe and that our academic enterprise keeps moving. Personally, I love being at Western New England and I've never been prouder to be part of this family. I hope you'll join us and so does Spirit. Thank you. Welcome to Western New England, and I look forward to seeing you on campus. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I forgot to mention we were talking about athletics. I know a lot of you, unfortunately, have had to miss your senior spring athletic seasons, and that is just such a bummer. So what I'd love for you to do is send us a picture in the Class of 2024 Facebook group in your athletic year, and make sure you say your full name and hometown, and I'm going to give you a fantastic t-shirt. 
Um, also, don't forget, in less than 10 minutes, we're going to have a live student panel with Adateo and five or six of our amazing student leaders. And so if you ask a question between now and then and we read your question, question live, I'm going to give you this jacket that I'm wearing. So please keep those questions coming. Speaking of questions, um, don't forget that our financial aid counselors are here for you until 1 o'clock today, and you can give them a call at any time at 413-796-2080. Hey, congratulations to Vanessa from Plainville. She's getting this jacket. Keep those pictures coming, folks. Now I'd like to invite you to listen to some fantastic students. We're going to have Hannah tell you more about her experience as a transfer student. Caitlin is going to tell you a little bit about what it was like to be a first-generation college student at Western New England University. Sarah is going to talk about the support that we have. And last but not least, Sam is going to tell you what it's like to be a commuter on campus. So keep those questions coming and enjoy these quick videos. See you soon. Hi everyone, um, congratulations on being accepted to Western New England. I know everyone is super excited um, to meet you, all the faculty, staff, and students, and we hope that we see you in the fall. Um, just a little bit about me, my name is Hannah Martin. Um, I'm from Ludlow, Massachusetts. I'm a health sciences major and I'm a sophomore. Um, also, I'm a little bit of a non-traditional student. I'm a first semester transfer student, um, which has been definitely different and exciting. Um, I just want to speak about um, my involvement um, on campus and when I put in my application and I heard back from uh, Western New England, um, they were super receptive and open and I was able to meet with someone from the first year office and we sat down and made a schedule and a plan for the rest of the semester so right away that took a ton of stress off of me so they really made the whole transition like super smooth um, and everything which has been awesome. Um, Another thing to um, my best advice um, for you guys would be to get involved on campus and put yourself out there. I know being a transfer student, I didn't know how many people I would meet, also being a commuter, because um, I'm already a sophomore, but I was able to join my class council. Um, I'm a candidate for peer advising uh, for next year, which is super exciting. And I'm also gonna be a member of the women's swim team um, next semester. So that's also very exciting. So my best advice to you would just be put yourself out there um, because Western New England will um, have you with open arms and we're all super excited to see you guys in the fall. Um, and I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and we can't wait to meet you. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I am a junior here at Western New England University. I'm currently a dual major in forensic biology and general chemistry, and I'm from upstate New York. I'm on the leadership team for Success First, which is a first generation college program that we have here on campus. What is a first gen, you ask? That means that you're the first in your family to earn a four year degree, which I'm actually one of them. And with that, we put on different workshops from understanding your financial aid to building a resume to just navigating the waters of college in general. And through this program, I have met so many people. I've worked closely with faculty for a couple of different things. And this is where I've also met my best friend. So that means I am extremely thankful for going through this program and just learning the resources that we have within that first semester was extremely helpful in navigating college and understanding what's going on and knowing the resources that we have at Western New England University to help me out through all of my classes. Hey future G-Bears, I'm Sarah Hazo. I'm a senior business management and leadership major from Harwinton, Connecticut. I'm super sorry you guys can't be on campus today and I'm hoping you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are located. I'm here to tell you about some of the most amazing resources we have on campus, such as like the Academic Success Center, the first year program, and even our st Western New England student activities. Um, I kind of think of our, tr our resources as a trampoline rather than a safety net. Um, safety nets have holes, so that means like people could fall through, or the trampoline, they kind of push us to bounce a little higher, extend our growth. Um, they're there when we're about to fall, but they always catch us and they always are there to push us forward. So if you have any questions about any of our resources, feel free to ask. We have some great ones here on campus and I hope to see you in the fall. Hi, my name is Sammy. I am a junior at Western New England University. My major is marketing communications and advertising. And I also have a minor in entrepreneurship I chose Western New England because it is a great school that's close to home for me. I'm a local student from Wilbraham and I'm able to commute to school 
while staying close to my family and working at my job from home as well. I also chose Western New England because the school is known for its close-knit community and you cannot beat the one-to-one -one connection you have with your professors and classmates with small class sizes and the interactive classroom setting. How are you gonna communicate the panelists? Hey, welcome back everybody. Hey Spirit, how was your walk around campus showing everybody the traditions? We were so lucky to have a great day way around spirit going insane anyway this is my favorite part of today the part where you get to hear directly live from our students and they really are the best part of my day every day we miss them so much now that they're not on campus but it's my pleasure to sort of toss it over to our student panel that's going to be moderated by Adateo. and while i get back to my desk they're going to introduce themselves tell you where they're from and a few things that they do on campus quick send us those questions take it away Adateo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aditeo Olatunwo. I am a junior psychology major from Monroe, Connecticut, and we're very excited to have you here today. On campus, I do many things, but I'm only gonna share a couple of them with you. I'm a peer advisor and I'm also an academic progress monitor. So I'm gonna have members of the panel introduce themselves, starting with Gary. Good morning, everyone. My name is Garrett Burnett. I am a junior mathematical sciences major at Western New England. I am from Chicopee, Massachusetts, pretty local. Um, and some things I do on campus, I'm a peer tutor, um, and I'm also the president of Golden Bear Community Council. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Wood, I'm a junior accounting major from Colchester, Connecticut. Some things I'm involved with on campus is I'm a peer advisor, I'm in the honors program for the College of Business, and I also am a student employee in Student Disability Services. Hi everyone, I'm Zeno Kumpo, a Law Society major, double minor in political justice. In Philadelphia, PA, and on campus, I'm involved with athletics, the first year office, I was an OGL, and I am a Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Sawyer. I'm a senior electrical engineering student at Western New England from Long Island. And some things I do on campus is I am the fundraising chair of the Alternative Freaks program. I'm an academic progress monitor with our Academic Success Center. And I'm also a vice president of Tau Beta Pi, which is our engineering honor society. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Cohen. I'm a junior computer science major from Monroe, Connecticut. Uh, on campus, I'm a tour guide. Uh, I work in admissions. I'm a peer tutor, uh, peer advisor, and I'm also involved with our Model United Nations Club. Hi, my name is Jordan Brown. I'm a junior American studies major from Wilbraham, Mass. On campus, I work in the first year office and the Academic Success Center as an academic progress monitor. Thank you, everyone. So our first question is, when you were looking to deposit, what was important to you to have in your college experience? And why did you choose Western New England University? So um, in my experience looking for schools, uh, it of course, it was coming down to money, and it's, it's a big thing. Um, so for me, it was going to be the college that gave me the most money. Um, ultimately, Western New England did not end up giving me the most money, but after visiting the school, uh, my mom and I realized that we, were, we needed to look at Western New England holistically and what it could offer to us. And I was getting great academics and getting a community of people who would care about me and want me to be there. Um, and that was invaluable. That was a resource that I, I couldn't put money on. And I knew that I was going to make it back at the end of the day. Um, and I've, I've felt that in my three years from being here. So thank you, Andrew. Um, so for me, you know, I, when I was younger, I grew up down the road from Western New England, actually. Um, and it's just kind of, I wanted to look for something close to home, um, just so I could, you know, stay in a close relationship with my family and things like that. Um, and I've been on Western New England before as, you know, I was in high school, I played on the baseball field, you know, I played like a tournament in the basketball court um, in at Western New England. Um, 
and like once I came on campus for an official tour, everything just kind of clicked, and I realized like I've been around Western New England my entire life, um, and just meeting the people once I got there and meeting the staff and the faculty just all made my decision so much easier and it just felt like the right place for me. Well, you're definitely at the right place, Gehrig. So our next question is, what do you remember most about your first few weeks on campus? How were you supported in making friends and getting connected? I always really like these questions um, at Open House because my first few weeks on campus, I swore I wasn't gonna get involved. The third day in, I think I texted my mom um, crying because I was gonna be that kid who transferred. And luckily as a senior, I can tell you that was definitely not the case. And <laughs> the best thing I actually did in the first couple of weeks was getting involved. So I joined freshman council right away. Uh, and that was a great way to meet other peers that were really interested in leadership on campus, but also event planning. And then from there, it got me involved with the alternative breaks program and then with peer advising. And so now I look back, I heard Andrew chuckle because we've done some stuff with peer advising together. And the best decision I made was getting out of my room and getting involved. We're definitely glad you got involved. Um, I can talk too. Um, one of the things that I remember is there was just so much going on on campus. There was something for literally everyone whether you were someone who wanted to hang out in a smaller group or you wanted to go to some huge event that had like the whole freshman class there, there was something for everyone. And I didn't participate in every single thing. It would be almost impossible to do everything that is offered on campus those first few weeks for first year students, but there's really something for everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it made it just so easy to get to know people who did have similar interests to you. And there was just so much support from all the upperclassmen and like the peer advisors, the resident hall advisors, everyone. So it was really awesome. Thank you, Chloe. Hey, Abiteo, we have a question. Great. Coming to us live from Abigail Hay in Plattsburgh, New York. She wants to know what are students' favorite traditions during the school year? Can anyone answer that one? Um, for me, it would probably be opening weekend. That's when all um, of the students arrive back to campus. Um, some of us on the panel are peer advisors, so we work really hardly during that weekend and a few weeks prior um, to get everything set up for all the students to come in. And there's a ton of events going on, um, some on campus, some off campus. And it's just great to see, you know, all the students come into the university and things like that. And it's just really like kind of marks like the beginning of the academic year, which is really fun. Um, for me, I would have to say alumni weekend or homecoming weekend, uh, you get to see everyone that you like went to school with, or even if you're a first year student, you get to meet new people that went there and they can share their experiences with you, um, especially being like this past year, homecoming weekend was really big because I saw a lot of people that I went to school with in the past three years, past four years. Thank you, Zeno. Our next question is, you all have friends at other colleges. When you talk to them, how does their experience differ from yours? And are there characteristics of Western New England University that distinguish it? Um, I can start with this one. Um, being a student athlete, playing football, I've made a lot of connections, definitely from high school. Um, a lot of my senior class I graduated, I graduated with play football at other universities and their traditions are definitely different. Um, everything from their crowds to their fans um, to their winning traditions. Of course, at Western New England, we're winning, we have a winning tradition here and it definitely shows by the support that we do have. Um, and asking my friends when I go home about their experiences at their schools is a completely different story, so. Thank you. Yeah, kind of going off um, what Zeno was saying about like our support, in my experience, I've always been able to talk to a professor or a faculty member, um, deans. I could go in and, and sit in with them. Um, it's because we have such a small student to faculty ratio and such a small student body, you can actually have this one-on-one -on -one time. Professors have to have like that mandatory minimum of five office hours, but they're always gonna be in their office. And you can get in on those times and respond to your email. Um, I just like when talking to like my friends at like larger schools, they're, they're not able to do that. They're not able to get that one-on-one -on -one time. So it's a good feeling to have. 
Thank you, Andrew. To add on to that, I think one thing that definitely distinguishes Western New England University from other universities is the faculty, staff, and student connection. Um, I can go in and talk to my professor anytime I need help, even during, even when they're not there during their office hours, I can schedule hours to go in and talk to them and they're always there. And I know my friends that go to larger institutions definitely don't have that opportunity. So I definitely appreciate Western New England for that. Our next question is, what was the best part of your first year and what contributed to that? Yeah, I can, uh, I can start with this one. Um, I would say the best part of my first year was we, a couple of us have talked about being involved in a peer advising program. Uh, you go through the, the bulk of the training for that program in your second semester um, in the spring. So my spring semester of my freshman year, we went through over 150 hours of training. So with that, um, it brings together a group of like-minded people who, who want to give back and want to help out and want to um, help the first year students. So I was able to find most, if not all my friends um, through that program. And in addition to that, I'm able to give back to the community and, and help out those first year students. Um, I've been through my freshman year. I, I know the mistakes that I've made and I am able to give back and, and help people not make those same mistakes, I guess. I'd say the best part of my first year was just the opportunity to meet so many different people. As someone mentioned before, there are so many events on campus and there's different ones that kind of cater to the different interests that all the incoming first year students have. So whether it was uh, Dancing with the G-Bears, it was called something else my freshman year, but that event is a ton of fun because you get a chance to see some of your fellow classmates dance as well as the class councils. And then there's Lights Out too, which, and the great thing about those events is that it also incorporates upper class councils. So you have a chance as a first year student uh, to work alongside the upperclassmen that have been doing this for a little bit and have a chance to kind of learn those traits from them, but also become friends with them. Thank you. Dean Jay, do you have any more questions for us? I do, and this one might really go out to Gehrig and Jordan to tackle. We've actually had quite a few questions about commuting, but Morgan Reardon from Holyoke Mass is gonna get my awesome t-shirt because she asked, um, as she's planning on being a commuter student and she's nervous that she might miss out on a lot of the experiences that you all are talking about. Do you recommend living on campus or can you get as uh, solid of an experience and make as many connections as a commuter? Yeah, so I'll kick this one off. Um, I've been a commuter student for all three years now and I'm commuting next year as well for my senior year. Um, and I thought that at first that maybe, you know, being a commuter student, I wouldn't be able to make as many connections as other students. Um, but then as the more that I had to tell myself to get involved, um, the more, you know, people I got to meet and the staff I got to get, get closer with. Um, as I said earlier, I'm the president of Golden Bear Commuter Council. So I run the club that is strictly for commuting students. Um, and we hold different events um, on campus for them. You know, we usually provide lunch um, as our general meetings twice a week. And we just trying to get the commuters to be um, recognized on campus and just remain pretty close together. Um, but there's events that are open to all students all the time and commuters are definitely um, able to go to those and mingle and things like that. So I, would, I think it definitely does a good job recognizing commuter students and getting them as involved as possible. Yeah, so for myself, when I first started at Western New England, um, being a commuter, I really was missing out on the connection. I kind of just would go home every day um, and not really connect with people on campus. So the biggest thing I would really recommend is making sure that you're involved in something on campus. Even if it's just a job, you'll be able to make connections with so many people. You can join commuter council, but you can also join other clubs that aren't just geared to commuters. There's like over 50 clubs on campus. So there's something for everybody. Thank you. Our next question is, what was the most challenging part of your first year and how were you supported through it? And I think I'll actually start off on this one. So for me, I struggled a lot with my major. Like I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and 
through that, I actually met a lot of amazing people. I met a lot of faculty and also the Career Development Center did help me out here. So every student is paired with a career counselor and this person kind of helps you navigate your way through a career if you already know what you want to do or finding the right career for you. And through that, I was supported in a lot of ways. Um, shout out to Sean Burke. Thank you for all your help and support. And through that, I was able to pick the proper major for me, um, which I did end up choosing psychology. Anyone else? Yeah, so I um, had something, I ch ended up changing my major, which a lot of students go in thinking that they're not going to do it, even though like the numbers behind it is that a lot of students actually do it. So I came in as engineering. Um, and when I was ready to switch, um, I wasn't really sure like the steps to go or all the, you know, things I had to take care of. Um, but my peer advisor reached out to me and every first year student gets a peer advisor. So I had nice contact with him. And then I actually had the chair of the mathematics department, which is my major now. I had the chair reach out to me and say, hey, you know, maybe we can meet up and try to, you know, come up with your new schedule for next semester and just kind of get to know each other. And he's actually my faculty advisor now. Um, so there's always faculty reaching out to you, which I think is a big thing. And um, just the support on campus that I got made my um, changing of major as easy as possible. So our next question is, how were you supported from your transition from high school to college? So I can start with this one. Um, definitely the transition from high school to college was a big one uh, for myself personally. Time management was really big for me. Um, I had a lot on my plate. I took up a lot um, just because I wanted to be doing a lot, you know? Um, didn't really know how to say no freshman year. But uh, <laughs> so faculty and staff really helped me um, through my first year. It was really student leaders that also helped me, um, leaders on the football team, leaders within the first year office actually also um, that stepped in and showed me the way to go, you know what I mean? So don't be afraid to ask for help and just be open to ideas. Thank Going you. from high school to college, I'd never been away from home before. And so being from Long Island, I was about four hours away when I was at Western New England. And at first I really struggled not having anyone I knew that was around me. And so one of the best things was just having those offices on campus to be able to stop in during the day. So if I had a break in my classes, I didn't have to spend it by myself. And so I ended up spending a lot of time with my freshman council advisor, who was Alyssa Caligiri. And because of her, I was more integrated on campus and I felt more comfortable being away from home. Hey, Adateo, good news here is we're getting lots and lots of questions. So we're gonna do the best we can to hit on some of the big topics that you all are, are sending to us and, and we really appreciate it. I don't know if you're just doing it for the fabulous t-shirts or because these guys are awesome. I think hopefully for the latter, but we have Skylar um, Galvez from New Jersey who wants to know a little bit more about study abroad. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, this past summer, <clears throat> I studied abroad in Paris, France for a month. It was amazing. It was um, a business focused program. So I took two, uh, four international business courses and got six credits that transferred back, which helped me to get ahead in credits. And it didn't kind of mess up my schedule here at all or anything because it was over the summer. And it was really the most amazing experience. It really opened my eyes to different cultures and interacting with different kinds of people, which I think will actually be very beneficial for me when I actually do work in the real world and with people. The world isn't just the US anymore. It really is intercultural. So getting that like firsthand experience was so amazing. And they do have programs for every kind of person, whether you want to just do, you know, three weeks in the summer, or if you wanted to try to go out and do like a full semester, you can kind of make those work by working with your faculty advisor and really getting what would work best for you in your schedule. Great, perfect. Maybe I can take one more out of tail. I know you have some more that you wanna ask, but um, uh, Rianne Anderson from Massachusetts is wondering like what process do you use to select a roommate? Like how did, how did you all do that here? Yeah, I can, uh, I can go ahead with that one. So we have a bunch of different options for students. Um, to choose roommates. The first one, and the one that we recommend usually is with our Facebook page. I know we've been talking about it a lot all throughout today. I was posting pictures, but it is a great way to choose a roommate. That's how I found my roommate. Um, you just post a little bit about yourself um, and then they'll hopefully people will comment. And uh, my roommate, uh, Max, he likes my taste of music. And then we started talking more and then we decided to be roommates. 
Uh, if not that, we also have um, like this kind of housing uh, management application kind of thing. Um, so that is, you fill in a little profile about yourself uh, with like likes, interests, and it'll match you with a certain percentage compatibility with another person. And then with that, um, you can reach out to them and see if you wanted to talk and, and maybe pick a roommate. Uh, if not that, we have our um, open houses, except the student stays. We have uh, our summer orientation. That's going to happen before you end up choosing housing. So you can actually uh, go through and talk to people um, there. And then if not that, um, we usually ask that you find a roommate um, beforehand, but because um, you end up picking the room that you want to be in. So. Thank you for those answers. So our next question is, what opportunities have you had beyond the classroom? For example, you can speak about some of your internships, your research projects, and study abroad. So I can get started on this one. My internship this past summer was a little untraditional for me. So I actually ended up going across the country to Albuquerque, New Mexico, working with the Kirtland Air Force Research Laboratory. And it was very terrifying at first. When I was in the process of selecting my internship, I got to pick between Kirtland, which was in Albuquerque, and a research lab in Washington, DC. And I've been to Washington DC before, it was only six hours from home and I was leaning towards going that way. But one of my professors, actually all of my professors now that I think of it, had different conversations with me about how, depending on what I wanted to do in the future, I really had to pick the one in New Mexico because it was going to open my eyes to research and further graduate studies. So I ended up going and they actually all checked in with me throughout the summer, but my internship was great. It was optical science based and it helped set me on the path for what I'm gonna do um, later in my career. But I wouldn't have been able to get it without the technical skills that I learned at Western New England. So, uh. You can go, you can go. All right, <laughs> um, so I can, uh, I can talk a little bit too. I mentioned that I'm part of our model United Nations Club. So this past semester, we actually uh, were able to go to our Har the Harvard National uh, Model U United uh, Nations Conference. Um, it was great, we didn't actually have to pay anything. We got like alumni funding and, and reached out through the different colleges uh, and were able to um, bus down there. And it was a great experience. If anyone uh, knows or is interested in Model United Nations, it's a great club. Um, I got to participate with people from all over the world. Um, a bunch of different countries came and we all basically got in a room over the course of four days and wrote drafts and resolutions. Uh, and it's not just Model United Nations that this happens with pretty much every club. Um, you get funding and are able to go on these conferences. Like the outing club goes and they go rock climbing, they do hikes. Um, all these different clubs have these different outings. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'll give a shout out before Zeno talks. You guys are doing great. I'm watching the chat feed. There's so many questions and I don't want to steal your thunder, Zeno, but I want to just take a minute to remind everyone to keep posting their questions because aside from our students who are my favorite for sure, um, we have academic deans in the chat uh, university staff from uh, enrollment services, admissions, uh, just to name a few. So, you know, Dr. Walker, I see Dr. Walker answering people's questions. Hi, Dr. Walker. Hope everything's going well for you while you're social distancing. And um, Dean of the College of Engineering is in there. And I see our chair of the CJ department. So keep your questions coming. If, even if we don't get to them on air today, somebody is there taking them and they're going to answer them. And um, we're gonna keep giving away prizes. And before Dean, uh, Zeno goes, I just wanna say that we're coming up on 1124 and that's our last class of 2024, $150 bookstore gift certificate prize. So if you haven't posted a picture of yourself in the Facebook page, as um, Andrew said, it's the best way to meet your classmates. Put that picture in there. And in just a few minutes after Zeno actually, I'll be picking a winner. Go for it, Zeno. Thank you. So um, I just want to speak on my internship currently. Uh, currently, I'm an intern for Senator Elizabeth Warren. Um, I wouldn't have gotten that without the connections I made on campus. Thank you to Josie Brown. Um, that's leading back to our connections between student and faculty. Just getting your faculty get to know you. And then after that, it's pretty much like all the word of mouth. They get your connections across campus, off campus. 
and people like around the area know of Western New England. So being a student at Western New England holds a lot of weight in the Springfield area. Hey, Adateo, we're getting a lot of questions about involvement, um, some specific to colleges, but also just in general. And I know it's tough um, for you guys to recommend because you're in so many things and you know so many people who are in clubs. But if you were talking with a first year student, what clubs in particular would you recommend that they join? So I would start off by telling them that it really depends on what you're looking for. We have over 70 clubs and organizations on campus. Some are major based, academic based, based on um, depending on the college that you're in. And then some are just like um, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. So it really depends on what you want to do. Um, several of us in this chat, we are peer advisors. Um, Andrew and I are also student ambassadors. I'm an academic progress monitor. Um, I'm also a member of United and Mutually Equal, which is the diversity club here on campus. Um, so there's a lot of things for you to do. You basically just have to choose what you want to do and find your group of people that way. Um, it's also important not to spread yourself too thin just because you are here for academics first. There's like so much to do. Um, I think someone mentioned earlier in the chat, like it's really impossible to go to every single event at every time just because there's just so much on campus to do, which is one thing I love about campus. You can kind of um, juggle around to find your group of friends through um, all the activities here. Yeah, something I'd like to jump in on as well. Um, each semester of the fall and the spring, we have a student activities expo that occurs during the first or second week of the semester. And that's where all 70 plus clubs and organizations um, will be in one room at one time. Um, they'll have like poster boards and some things to give away and things like that. So you can kind of go there and just take all the clubs in at one time and just kind of see, okay, maybe I could be interested in this. And you can sign up right then and there and they'll reach out to you and you automatically you know, can go to some meetings and then you're making connections here and here and all these different places. Um, so I definitely recommend going to that, um, which will be in the fall and the spring semester. Dean Jay, do you have any more questions for us? Well, I do have to announce the big 1124 winner and drum roll from everyone. Our winner is Miles Atkins from Fairfield, Connecticut. Hey, Miles, you're oh, going to get $150 to the bookstore. Um, this is made, this is definitely a question that you guys are going to have a hard time answering. Faith um, from North Attleboro, Mass, wants to know what's the best residence hall to live in. Maybe mm. you could talk a little bit about the first year opportunities. And I mean, I'm sure it's a contest. Everyone thinks their hall is the best, but. I can go first. Um, my freshman year, I lived in Berkshire Hall, which is in the quad, and it was definitely the best building. There was never a dull moment in the building. I think even all the time we had people from other buildings coming and hanging out. Um, like I, one of our best friends I met was from Commonwealth Hall and I swear she basically lived in my building and it was just super fun. Our resident hall advisors were awesome. And I think the quad in general is pretty awesome, but Berkshire Hall is definitely my favorite. I'm sorry, Chloe, but I really have to disagree. Um, Hamden Heat is definitely Hamden. the best freshman residence hall ever. Um, my time in Hamden was so much fun. Um, but in general, you know, not to be biased or anything, my freshman year, we did win Bear Olympics. So um, yeah, there's a the Bear Olympics, and this is where all the residence hall, the freshman residence hall, come together in the beginning of the year, and they kind of, like, battle it out. Um, there's a lot of games from, like, tug of war to, like, athletic activities. There's also... Um, sportsmanship activities because I'm not athletic so um, we, uh, we were able to also win by um, having a lot of sportsmanship it was super fun and there your peer advisors are also there so they kind of get to cheer you on it was a really fun event and like I said um, we did win my freshman year but if you're a first year student in general generally I encourage people to live in the quad just because the quad does have three buildings in there and that's where most first year students live so if you want to meet friends the quickest that's where you should live you just literally walk outside and you're like hey you want to be friends someone's like yeah sure um and then there's also a lot of events there like there's the end of the year barbecue there so if you do live in the other buildings that aren't in the quad no problem you'll just always find yourself back in the quad because that's where most students do live and so i'll speak for me and dino uh we lived in wyndham hall our freshman year um i can confidently say we're both really proud wyndham warriors uh and so speaking to not living in the quad freshman year you will still have the chance to meet some individuals who live there but you're a little closer to the dining hall if you're in wyndham hall 
Um, I have a question coming in, um, Jill Porman, and I'm going to apologize if I can't say someone's last name properly with a name like Darzavsky, it happens to me too. But Jill is not Facebook and she's wondering if there are other ways to make friends before the um, academic year starts. Anybody have any suggestions for Jill? Yes, so Jill, I did not have Facebook when I was coming into um, the university, but one thing I will say is uh, I have Instagram, um, so a lot of students put WNE and then their class in their bio, and that's how I was able to find students. Um, I'm class of 2021, so every time I saw someone with class of 2021, I would just follow them, and then another great thing to do is you can either follow admissions or the general university page and kind of like scout through to see if um, people that are on those pages um, do have that in their bio. So um, my suggestion would be to not be afraid to put yourself out there and go out of your comfort zone while at summer orientation. Because like I mentioned, that's going to be before picking roommates, before any of like that um, stuff. And you'll pick classes there, I believe. Um, but everyone is there to meet people. We have our orientation group leaders, which I'm sure other people can talk about, um, who are just a load of fun, load of energy, keeping you pumped. You have games going on. You have a late night going on. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to walk up to people, say hi, play games with them. So. Hey, Zeno, we're getting a lot of questions. Um, uh, you know, just to pick on one, Ben Devine is asking about being a student athlete and balance, balancing a major and maybe two minors. And somebody else was talking about uh, Connor Fallon, actually. Hey, Connor. Um, is wanting to know, you know, uh, as an athlete who got accepted into the honors program, what would you suggest, suggest? And I guess I'm just sort of wanting to know with your experience balancing being a fall athlete, you know, what's some of the support that's available and is it possible to balance rigorous academic commitments and an athletic commitment? Right, so um, doing all of that, basically communication. Communication is key, um, especially being a student athlete, uh, communication with a coach, coach communication with your professors um, and making sure there's never like a gray area. Um, every little thing you do, say you have to be late to class because of you're running late from practice, email your professors, email your coach, um, updating them if you have to study for, for your honors classes, things like that. Um, email them like anything pretty much. So make sure you have that like straight line of connection to your coaches, your um, if you have a job, your boss, um, and your professors also, so communication. Hey, Jordan, I see that your uh, your bosses are in our chat. Dominic Seguro is in there. Tim Hobart, I know you work in the Academic Success Center. What is, you know, how could you be a support to someone, not just an athlete, who just wants some additional support um, as they come into college? So Academic Progress Monitors meet with students both weekly and biweekly. Um, the sessions are really individualized for each student, so we really focus on what the student needs the most help with. So like if an athlete comes with us, a lot of times we'll focus on time management, making sure they know when they have practice, but also when they're going to do their homework. Um, we have a lot of commuters who do it um, just to make sure that they're making connections. Um, so academic progress monitors really just focus on a wide spectrum of things with students just to ensure that they are doing well academically. Great, thanks. Adate, I'll let you ask your question now. I've been totally monopolizing. Okay. Our next question is, what is there to do on the weekends? All right, I can, uh, I can get going. So um, we've kind of been talking about it um, throughout this, but there's we have Friday and Saturday events um, through specifically in the first six weeks, but throughout the entire year. Um, our campus activities board is actually our largest club on campus, and they uh, specifically put events both on campus and off campus. This is something that isn't talked about as much, but um, me personally, in the fall, uh, campus activities board put on a, a trip to Boston. They have those haunted um, like trolley rides, $20. They bust us down, um, and it was like a six-hour trip. We just went quick Saturday, um, and it was so much fun. So they constantly put these up on this website we have called like university tickets. So it has all these events. We have like our theater group, they put on um, shows that you can purchase tickets for. Uh, whatever club you're involved in will probably put on events um, throughout most Friday, Saturday, usually Sunday, usually throughout the whole week, there's stuff going on. And if you're, oh, Chloe, you can go. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I was just going to say something for me too. Like I'm someone who like, I like to get out and do things. And there's a ton of spots around where you can go hiking and do stuff like that with your friends. There's also just a lot in the area. So like my friends and I, once in a while, we'd go out for dinner. There's some really good like breakfast places around. So a lot of students who are first year students do have cars on campus. So if, even if you don't, your friend might. So there is the opportunity to do that too. It's not like we're in the middle of nowhere with like nothing to do. So that's also something if you kind of didn't have anything on campus you wanted to do that weekend. And if you're super into athletics, there is almost an athletic game every single week, every single weekend. So you can get your friends together and kind of head to those. And our athletics are absolutely amazing. I know Zeno could definitely agree. Being winning four rings in a row while he was here, I think we're in five total. Uh, my roommates are on the women's basketball team. Uh, so they won the, the championship last year. So all the games are high energy and a ton of fun to go to and a great way to meet other people. Speaking of athletics, also their intramural sports, um, they happen weekday nights. Um, you don't have to be athletic to play. It's just for fun and recreation. Uh, so come out and play in the gym, HLC. Great. DJ, do you have any more questions for us? You know, I'm getting um, some questions about working. Um, so did, did you all get jobs on campus? How did, how did you find a job? You know, were you able to work and balance you know, your, your classes. So just like we have the Student Activities Expo, we also have a job fair in the beginning of the school year. And the job fair provides jobs for students that have work study and also do not have work study. For example, I'm a student without work study and I was still able to have opportunities for employment on campus. Um, the great thing about finding a job on campus is they understand that you are a student first. So literally, if you need to, um, you know, call out of a shift to do some homework, they'll completely understand. And um, your bosses work with you based on your school schedule. So you send them your schedule for the semester and they kind of work around that and they'll make sure that you're okay to um, work through that schedule. And they're very understanding. We also have an online platform called like My Interface that kind of goes through our career development center and like our human resources and they'll post uh, job postings throughout like the university, wherever they're open. Usually if you, I would recommend getting started early because um, then you'll have your pick essentially. But even throughout the uh, year, positions open up uh, different like colleges, like the College of Engineering, they'll have like lab assistant positions or I mean, I'm sure Laura can talk more, but um, you know, as long as you go on and, and go early, you can usually apply straight through the, pro the um, website too. Yeah, also um, you could just walk into the office and ask to apply, <laughs> that's what I did. Um, I don't have work study, so I just went and tried to work in something that I was interested in and I work in the office of first year students. Um, and it's just like really, it's a great way to get to work really closely with the phenomenal staff of the office and just like finding out ways to also help myself and like my academic career. So there's definitely different offices around campus that you can get that you can get into. And again, like just the connections that you'll make through that, even with you know staff and faculty, it's just like really amazing. Hey, Chloe, Dean Walker is throwing out some swag to anybody who's um, a future College of Business student. So if you haven't seen it, follow her um, on Twitter at Walker Sport Management or email her. She's going to pick a few winners. Um, so we have a question coming in from Morgan Tilly from Eatonville, Washington. Um, she's actually making me hungry. It's getting near lunchtime here. She says she's a vegetarian and she's curious about what kind of options the dining hall serves. How's the food? Um, I can talk to that. I'm actually also a vegetarian and lived on campus my first two years. So I was also eating at the dining hall. And one of the nice things about um, the dining commons is they always have some pretty standard things that I always knew no matter what I was going to be able to get. They have pasta, they have pizza, they have a salad bar, they have a ton of stuff like that. So no matter what, I was always comfortable with the fact that like I'll be able to get a filling meal as a vegetarian. Um, but they also always had a rotating vegetarian option, which was also really nice because you could quickly get sick of those other things. And it was always good. And you can get as much food as you want. So I was never hungry after. There's also really good desserts and stuff like that. So it's definitely good, even if you do have dietary restrictions. And I got to give a shout out to Anthony from our Aramark Food Services, because whenever I go up there, he always seems to have some salmon for my salad because, <laughs> you know, I'm a pretty picky eater, too. And I like to try and stay healthy so I can like keep up with Dino out there when I'm, when I'm running around. So I appreciate that. Carolyn Mills from Westport, Connecticut 
wants to know where you all hang out with your friends on campus. Uh, if you ever walk into the campus center, you will find an abundance of people. I'm laughing because I'm pretty sure everyone in this chat has been found there at some point. Um, it's a pretty comfortable area. There's a uh, pool tables, a ping pong table, some foosball tables. There's like an arcade section. I have an obsession with need for speed games and we just don't have, to have one in the campus center. Uh, but there's also just some tables. So it's a great place if you want to hang out with some friends or do homework in a place that's not super, super quiet. Uh, you can definitely always find someone there. We also have uh, common rooms in each of the residence halls. Um, so those are spaces that also have a pool table too, and usually a TV uh, with, with couches that you can kind of just sit and, and hang out with. Um, I remember my freshman year, um, we just had a bunch of people coming in, probably like 20 or so. We just played card games. Um, we actually, like the RAs were like, I love that you guys are like talking to each other, but you're really loud. It's getting late. <laughs> um, but um, that's a great space as well. And a lot of people tend to spend time there. Um, there's also a dedicated space for commuter students on campus. We have the Golden Bear Commuter Lounge that's located in the campus center, um, which is like a sectioned off um, place for commuters to kind of hang out together. There's a microwave in there and there's a refrigerator and things like that. So for commuters who bring lunch, it's just kind of like a designated hangout space for us as well. I just saw a question come in from Betsy. She's wanting to know um, how, like, what kind of electives to take in your freshman year. How were you all guided in your course selection process? And how do you know, like, you know, what, were there things you could take just for fun? Is everything prescribed? How did you, I mean, some of you changed your major. How did you figure all that out? So for me, um, I came in with a couple uh, transfer credits from like AP. Um, so I got like my psychology and like uh, one of my English is out of the way. So that actually pushed me ahead. Uh, you, a lot of the degrees actually have um, a sequence. So it'll tell you which um, your first and second semester, freshman year, sophomore year, so on and so forth, what is recommended to take, like including electives. So I was able to just look and just pick ahead. And so that allowed me to get a lot of my electives out of the way. And um, thankfully I ended up switching majors from engineering to computer science since I got so many lectures out of the way, I'm, I'm not pushed behind at all. Mo a lot of my tr credits are transferring over. Um, so in my experience, I would look at what um, is on that sequence. And then if there's something else that you wanna take, um, you can switch them out. It's an elective, like you can take it essentially whenever um, you want. So a lot of it is up to you. I know like the College of Business um, specifically, we take a lot of the same classes our first two years for all the college of business students, whether you're a marketing major or an accounting major. And there are a lot of students who are business undecided. So it makes it really easy for you to kind of wait a little to try out some classes before you declare a major, which is really nice. And like, if you are leaning towards some, you can try to take those classes first for us. Um, so you can actually see if you like it before declaring it. And there's also something I always recommend to people is trying the different academic related clubs. So like trying the marketing club and seeing if you like that and the stuff they're doing in that club, because maybe then you will like the major as well, since it would be like similar. So that's something I would say. And then we also have um, something called self-service. So this is basically a platform for you to like kind of look at um, courses and see if they'll fit in to your schedule and like your graduation timeline. So I know I personally use that. Um, Dean Jay actually put in a note for me. I think it's still there from like two years ago. So like your advisors um, can put in notes for you on what they think you should take. Um, once you like schedule yourself, they can kind of tell you like, okay, this is good for you to take. You can um, take this as well. And then you also have um, general university requirements. So this kind of gives you options and electives that you can take as well as um, every major will have some form of elective option. Um, some majors have more than others so it just really depends on the type of major you're in but overall self-service is a great way to kind of um, figure out your options for electives. And some of you are getting put on the spot because you actually said you changed your major <laughs> so they're like wanting to know um, Ben Jacobson is like hey Andrew why'd you change your major I think maybe uh, you're just wanting to major and then what you you change your mind on and yeah. so I yeah. think it's a good question and like you know what are the kinds of things that lead you to because many students most of our students actually fun fact folks most of our students come in decided there's there's maybe less than you know 100 students who identify as like exploring within college of business, exploring within engineering, and then less than 50 typically who come in saying, you know, I really just want to explore. 
And a lot of how you make your decision, I think, is, is based on what you've been exposed to either in high school um, or, you know, in your home and you know, family members, you know, or what somebody told you is trending right now in terms of jobs. Um, so, you know, lots of times you don't really know until you like get in there and you start studying it, right? So what are the, what led you to sort of change your major? Put you on uh, yeah. You. And it's no, not, no, that's fine. It's <laughs> our friend Benjamin. <laughs> hey, um, so for me, I, I went through a full year of engineering and what's really, really great about, I love the engineering program, don't get me wrong. Um, what's really great about the program is that you start right away getting hands-on. And so um, in my first semester, I was like, building, I was like using robotics, I was coding, um, keep that in mind. Um, and then second semester, we did even more uh, coding and it was more uh, individual, I guess, like create my own project. And so with that, um, I did all of the coding and I loved it, I loved it. And then over the summer, I started doing more coding. Um, and then the second semester, we started getting more into, or the second year we started getting more into like the specific engineering classes and I realized that I didn't like that as much as I liked the coding. Um, so within, this was like the first or second week of classes, I went to the uh, office first year students and had a new schedule in two days. Um, and it was all set. And was, I worked with my faculty. I really like sat down with a lot of professors and was like, is this the right decision? Um, the engineering professor was like, nope, you should stay. But um, I was like, all right, this is my reasoning. Um, and I ended up, I'm very happy with my decision. I'm happy that I switched. Um, and I didn't have to, this is something that I'll, I, I will bring up. Sorry, it's taking a long time. but. Um, you're not going to have to compromise um, for choosing a different major. Um, some schools like are very like engineering specific or, or very like this business specific. All of our programs are amazing at what they do. All of them have accreditations in their fields. And so if you switch your majors, you're not going to get a lesser education from it. You're just going to get an education that you more closely connect with. All right, I think that takes a lot of the questions that we're getting. And so we're gonna wrap up here in just a few minutes. Adateo, I think maybe you had one or two closing things you wanted to ask them. So I'm gonna toss it back to you. Yeah, so great job, guys. Thank you so much. To conclude, what is one word you would use to describe Western New England University? Um, I would say family. I would say well-rounded. Josie. Future. Uh, I would say opportunity. I would say growth. And I would say community. Thank you so much for today. And thank you so much for being with us and tuning in. We'll see you soon. All right, I'm gonna take it from you, Adateo. Thanks so much, guys. It was good to see all your faces for my seniors. Like you need to come back and visit me this summer, okay? <laughs> Hang out, I know it's tough. All right, so I wanna say I first think, hope that today was helpful to all of you who are out there in YouTube land um, and that you got, you enjoyed watching Spirit and I make our way uh, across campus. Um, I wanna congratulate all of our winners so far. We really appreciate your participation. It's been awesome to see, you know, 400 plus of you in the, in the chat and posting your pictures and your questions. And we really love to see it. And it certainly warms our heart when we can't see you all on campus. Spirit's sad, he didn't get to meet you personally, but he's hoping he can see you all in the fall. I wanna just encourage you all to keep checking out the links on the wne.edu backslash virtual. Um, there's some additional um, videos there and some additional um, support services. You'll find information on academics, support systems, financial aid, living on campus and commuting. So there's some more short, fun, informative videos if you enjoyed some of the videos that you saw so far today. While you check out those links, remember that for about another hour or so, our enrollment services staff, I see Julie Richardson on the chat answering lots of questions. They're available and they wanna to speak to you. They're at home working uh, remotely and they want to talk to people. So please give them a call at 413-796-2080 with any financial aid questions or veteran benefit questions that you might have. And while our event formally wraps up at 12, remember that we are always here for you at any time to answer any of your questions. And many of our students are home remotely and want some time away from making puzzles when they're not taking classes. And so they're gonna help us by you know, being available at various points to reach out to you. And so stay tuned, there's gonna be some upcoming events as well that admissions will be um, sharing with you. Um, more um, things to remember, deposits are due by June 1st. 
um, or by August 15th through special arrangement with an admissions counselor. This is an extension of our previous May 1st deadline. And um, we want you to check out the video uh, on our website showing you how simple it is to actually make the deposit. We understand that this COVID-19 situation is fluid and challenging for many of you. I certainly hope everyone is healthy, but it certainly has posed some financial challenges and not allowed you to visit some of the campuses you know you may have needed to be able to visit. So while we hope today was helpful, we also wanna make sure you have time to make your decision. So that's why we extended the June 1st deadline. But also consider making your deposit today because students who deposit, as soon as they deposit, we consider you a part of our Golden Bear family, just like all the students that are right here with me today. And um, we will be providing you with our support right away. So um, by the end of April, early May, you're actually gonna hear from some of our student leaders, some of whom are right here with us um, on this chat um, as orientation group leaders to provide some support for you as you start to prepare for college. And Dominic, who's in the chat with Tim and our staff in the Academic Success Center, like Jordan, are gonna volunteer and be willing to, to help you in finishing up that senior year. So if you need some additional support in your senior year classes, or you just need a pep talk and how to handle all that remote learning, um, or your back is just killing you from, from sitting on your chair all day at home, give us a shout out as a deposited student, we're gonna be able to provide you with support. Um, again, remember if you have any additional questions that might come up, the admissions team is available to you and can be reached at learn at wne.edu. Again, learn at wne.edu or at, uh, by phone at 1-800-325-1122. So uh, if you're curious about who won today, um, we're gonna be posting those winners um, on our site and I wanna congratulate you all. I can't wait to see you all in your gear. Um, the admissions team will be working on Monday morning to get out all your fabulous prizes. So how many of you have ever seen The Masked Singer? I have seen The Masked Singer and I'm always like, who is behind the mask? Well, you might be wondering who the golden bear is. Who is the man behind the mask? Drum roll, and the bear is, who's the bear? Who could it be? Hello, everybody. It's Brian Gross, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Marketing, and I'm gonna have him close out the day by sharing a few of his words with you. I wanna thank you for being with me this morning. It was really my pleasure to be a host, and as a Dean of First Year Students, I really am so excited to welcome you all in our class of 2024, and I can't wait to see you soon on our campus, so stay well. Um, stay healthy and you know try to get out there and get some fresh air um, and I'll turn it over to Brian Gross. Well hello everyone um, I just want to say a, a few closing words um, thank you thank you so much to our uh, prospective students our deposited students and their families for being with us this morning um, the attendance was amazing we had close to 400 people with us all day long Thank you to our terrific students. Let's give a virtual round of applause to our, our great students. We couldn't do this without you. Um, such a special thanks to the um, staff members who helped make this event possible and who have been working with our students all day. And then finally, um, the most important aspect of our community is our faculty. And um, I've just been blown away um, by our faculty since I started working here, but especially in the last few weeks, seeing the way that they've responded to the situation seeing how much they truly love and care about our students, um, wanting to make their experience as special as possible. Um, I, I know you have a lot of choices in terms of thinking about college and universities out there. And really my advice is it's really not what the universities do or how the universities do what they do, but it's really why they do what they do. And um, I love coming to work every day because I'm surrounded by students and faculty and staff members that just care so deeply about the education and the outcomes of our students. And, um, it's so hard to put into words, but it's a, it's a true and genuine feeling. And I hope that you'll decide to enroll at Western New England University because um, you'll become part of our family. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, you'll be hearing more from us um, all summer long. Bye now. <laughs>